little piece of gizmo is that, that I'd like to present a little bit of the history of Shiloh. And, uh, and I, hadn't ever, I hadn't done much on Shiloh, mostly Paige Jackson, but I hadn't done much on Shiloh. But when I went to, to do some research, of course, the hurricane came along, and we ended up, you know, the Sanford Museum was closed. Everything was closed. The church that owns uh, Shiloh and the museum and all these other offices were closed. So I, so I didn't get all of the, inf all of the information, but I, but I at least can give you uh, some preparation for what we're going to see when we go up there. Let me see. We should, so we should move the microphone there? If that's where he wants to use it at. Okay, the first thing is, the first thing is the aerial photo I took from, from uh, Google Earth. Yeah, I just did that. I did that. And, uh, This is a uh, part of Irma too, you know, technical difficulties. Yeah. Okay. There you have it. Okay. okay. Sure that to send something for for Dean the next the next time he yeah. says, <laughs> says, no, uh, he says something just for him so we can well, connect and have uh, this uh, material coming out quickly. But, but do you want as, as tile or or, or as large, large icon? Well, I'm, when you had it right there, it, it, you should have been able to put it on large icon. No, so open that. That's that that. that open the recent the file. file. Oh, yeah. You can do large, large, large okay, wait a minute here. Wait, 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 okay, let's, let's see this one here. Mm -hmm. yeah, just, the thing is, I was wondering if it was already open. Yeah, I tried like having through their windows. No, their windows open. No. Okay. Then the next thing you do is you use open with and pick a, a we, sort of. We did it open. We did it open with. Okay, leave that side open, pull it to the side, and then open your, your paint program and then see if you can grab it. Oh, uh, it's my computer. It's a new one. And, and it's... I have a Well, hey, hey, you know, I can, I can talk a little bit while you're... While he's yeah, he and this uh, here. Go ahead and then uh, try to figure it out for me. You know, the, the Sanford was actually started... I mean, people started living in the Sanford area, which was on the river, uh, after the Civil War. Uh, in fact, there were probably a few, some people living there before the Civil War, but it was, the town itself was not incorporated until 1877. But there, as I say, you know, in 1821, uh, the United States took over Florida from, uh, from Spain, and so people were moving down, and Sanford was a good place, a good spot along the river, so people were started you know, settling in that area. Well, uh, over time, there were some, especially after the Civil War, there were several black communities that were established uh, right around, mostly to the west of Sanford. And one of them was Goldsboro. And um, just to the west of Goldsboro was this high ground, which was where 
people were buried. They took, you know, they buried them. They tend to bury people in, in on the high ground because, you know, as you know, like in New Orleans, they everybody's buried above ground because below ground, they, you know, the water table comes up, and pushes all the, the, yeah. the caskets up. So, so this area, which is now called the Sanford um, Cemeteries. Uh, has been a, you know, it's been, people have been buried there for a long, long time. Uh, prob again, probably before the Civil War, probably after 1821 or so when they, uh, when they started settling the area. Well, now we have, okay, you've got it, okay, that's one of them there. All right, this is the, this is, the, these, this is Sanford Cemetery. Uh, we have, there's several of them, this is called Rest Haven up here, up here. And there's uh, right here is called it's All Souls, and then that comes back here, and then <coughs> then we have this big area here. That's Page Jackson, and the problem with Page Jackson is that uh, it was originally established in eight, in 1900 by the Old Fellows Fraternity, which is a, it's a fraternal organization mm -hmm. which still exists today, which is started in England. But they bought this about five eighths of originally about five eighths of an acre, and they asked for the very people. Well, over time, uh, the old fellows kind of disappeared, and I don't know what happened to the old fellows. I never have figured that out yet. Uh, but uh, there were family plots all through here. You know, these little tiny, you know, you know, stuff like this where you might have four or five graves. Mm -hmm. Then the, the family dies off, people move away, they die. So you have all these, these. These uh, uh, graves in here in Page Jackson, which have been neglected, uh, completely overgrown, trees down over them. And, you know, of course, it, uh, you can see that there's mostly trees in there now. Uh, there, there's some, there's some that are above, the, above some of the uh, mausole mausoleums, if you will, that are above the ground, and there's they've got holes in the side. You can actually see the caskets or see the uh, you know, the vaults in there. Well, so anyway, that's Page Jackson. Well, the one we're going to see is actually this this place here, which is, that's Shiloh. Well, we, I, I don't know you, I assume you're going to come down the, the, what, the second or third entrance past the caretaker's house. And then the, this is the, the, the caretaker for this part of the cemetery, or these cemeteries, lives right there. There is no caretaker for the Page Jackson, and that's one of the problems. Uh, there is a caretaker, and you'll see the, the difference. There is a caretaker for Shiloh, a guy named Willie Melton. I talked to him this past week. Um, so you, you, there's a big difference, and it's, it's very sad when you're coming through, and scary too, especially at night, coming through yeah. Page Jackson. All right, so <coughs> at any rate, what, what happened? Um, well, I won't go into any, any detail about Page Jackson, which used to be the old, well, I'll tell you about it. It used to be, this used to be called, because it was bought by the Old Fellows and established by the Old Fellows Fraternity, it used to be called the Old Fellows uh, Cemetery. But uh, then there was this fellow, this guy named William Page Jackson, who had a farm, and I don't know, I think the farm was over here, but I'm not sure. But at any rate, people would... Uh, come for burials, they would pass the, his farm and he would be there saying hello, he would say hi to him and pay him his respects. So it eventually became known as Page Jackson, and that's what it's called today. All right, so that's why, that's why it's Page Jackson. Well, Shiloh, let me talk about Shiloh here now. Uh, the, the cemetery is actually owned by the, the Shiloh Missionary Baptist Church. And as I said, there's a caretaker a guy, named, this guy's name is William uh, uh, Melton, he's been there for 20 years as the caretaker. Uh, I'm not sure why this was started here, except that maybe there was a flu epidemic uh, here in 1918, 19, and it killed a lot of people. And maybe this kind of started filling up, so the Shiloh Baptist Church bought this and they started burying people here. Because you'll see, I'm going to show you some pictures here, you'll see uh, we're not talking about this piece right here. We're just talking about this area right here. It's 11, it's 11 acres. You'll see back along in here, you'll see some <coughs> old, old, old uh, graves which have no markers on them. So, you know, we don't know when they were buried. We don't know who they are or anything else. There's a list of names. And I think the, the total 
the total uh, buried in there now is, uh, do, you, do you remember, I've forgotten off the top of my head, four or five hundred people in Shiloh? Maybe not that many. No, no, and, well, no, and Page Jackson, I know I've got about 700. Yeah. The last, yeah. The last time. So, so, so at any rate, at any rate, um, I'm, I'm going to continue searching, trying to figure out what, how old this, this Shiloh Cemetery is and why it was established there. All right, there's the map. Uh, I want to show you some interesting things here. <clears throat> oh, 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 okay. Would you go to? Tell me what you want. Would you go to? Uh, well, just go to. Grab a picture, okay? Just start at the top, I guess. Just start at the top, and we'll just, we'll just start talking. Mm -hmm. Okay, this this is, if you're coming in from the road, you come in, the road turns like this, and you, you'll see a picture of that, and you park over here or down there. This is the very back end of the, of the cemetery of, of Shiloh, and the, there's heavy woods over here on this side, and of course over here on this side. You can see these, these uh, graves here, and those are called ledgers, these things are on top. The way that, the way people are buried now, you have you have a, a grave, you have a vault that goes in the grave, and the casket goes in the vault, and then you have a, a casket lid. Well, usually you have a, you'll have a tombstone of some sort, which has a, you know the name of the person when they have been born and died and so on and so forth. But in uh, especially in older uh, black uh, societies. Instead of using tombstones, which you'll see, and you'll see more when we get out here, you'll, they, they, have, they put these ledgers on here. And uh, why I don't, I don't know why they use ledgers. And you can still, I mean, I was looking in a, on a website for, uh, for tombs, so, you know, for, uh, for headstones and things, and they sell ledgers also. But most of these ledgers are, are very simple. Most of them actually are concrete. Um, although you can get granite, you can get marble, you can even get bronze, which is, I guess, pretty, probably pretty expensive. But uh, uh, I want you to remember that one right there, okay? Would you give me the next one? See if that's... Okay. Uh, it's hard to tell, but see this right here? That is painted to look like bronze. This one here. Uh, give, give me a uh, give me the next one, please. Okay. Well, this this is the actual entryway. This wall is kind of where the last picture was was uh, was this way. Okay. And this is the actual entryway into the cemetery. The, the those original graves I showed you were they were over here, and these you can't tell it, but there's a lot of graves. You can see them here, but there's also in through here and everything else, and then of course all over here. Right, next, get the next one, please. All right, here's a new section. The yeah. graves in here are they? These are from the, from the 80s and 90s and and the you know, 2000s. All these. Mm -hmm. uh, there's some really nice and well kept graves in there, and you can see obviously people come and and pay their respects a lot. Okay, this is this is coming in on the road. On, this is Page Jackson, starting into Page Jackson, coming in through here. It's pretty cleared over here. I forget. This is the cemetery that's behind between All Souls Catholic Cemetery and Page Jackson. I forget the name of that one, but it's a little cemetery here, and this is maintained. Page Jackson, as I said, is not maintained. Give me the next one, please. Okay, that's. That's, that's the entry with that sign yep. there. It says Page Jackson Cemetery. And you go back in there and it's really nasty. Okay, okay. Uh, how about the next one? Okay, here's, here's one. I mean, these folks, this is, a, this is a, a poor community, all right? And this is the best they could do. And so this is what they did. They painted the guy's name on here and you can't, it's a lot legible now, but it had all the information about when he died, what was born and died and everything. But this is one of the ledgers that I was telling you about. Okay, well, that's, yeah, yeah screw that one up, well that's okay. Uh, you can see <laughs> painted, these are painted. 
Now, I, I was asking, I asked a bunch of people why they were painted. I, I probably asked a dozen people. Most people said they didn't know. But here are some of the, here are some of the answers I got from some, from some people. One person said the, 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 they painted the ledgers the color of the person's house so that they would feel at home when they were in the grave, when their spirits were there. Another one said to make it look like granite or bronze. And you'll, you'll see when we get out there, you'll see there's, a lot, there's quite a few that are, that are painted that way. Uh, another person said it was paint blue, which this, these really, I don't believe these are really paint blue. Maybe this one's close. But paint blue to keep the ghosts uh, you know, in their graves. Uh, another person, Willie Melton, the caretaker for 20 years, said that, that uh, they painted the sealed cracks in the, in the ledgers. So, who knows? <coughs> oh, yeah, that's a Willie. Oh, the other, the other person, so another person said that only paint they had. So, <laughs> okay. Uh, hey, <coughs> See that? Okay, here's another one. I get. I this was in the in the new section, and I don't know whether that's supposed to be like granite or what, but it's it's a new ledger and it's it's concrete and it's painted that battleship gray. So. <laughs> But it's very well maintained. You can see these flowers, are, most of the flowers you'll see are plastic. But the other thing is that you know, usually when you go to a grave site and there's, they, they have plastic flowers, and you know, they, they, they get changed maybe once a year or maybe never. But a lot of these plastic flowers get changed a lot because they, they're obviously new. I mean, they're obviously fairly new. So that's very interesting. Uh, how about the next one? Okay. Okay. This is a this is another view. Can you? Well, you can see as I, you know, I mentioned, you can't see them from the you can't see the the graves from where I was originally standing. But you can see they're all over the place. That, that's I was with a friend of mine, Marty Bench. Who's, she's not into the paranormal, but she's into uh, grave <coughs> restoration. And uh, she, she took me out there uh, the, you know, the other day and, uh, to show me. This is before the hurricane, by the way. And that's my truck there. That's, the, the entrance is oh, right over here behind her car. You come in, you come from over here, you come in around like that. I'm guessing there's a lot of down trees on the road, and it's probably pretty dangerous to go through. There, there could be after the, but I don't. When I was out there the other day, this was after Gizmo was out there. The, uh, there were no tr down trees on the on the road coming in, on the dirt road coming in, which was good. So at any rate, but at any rate, the point I want to make is that you can see there's a lot of lot of graves here, and most of them are are ledgers. Ledgers here. Uh, okay, what, the next one. Have you seen a lot of spirits there? Oh, well, well Gizmo's, he's got to probably talk about a lot of spirits, but, okay, this is from the corner, the, the very first, if you remember, the very first picture that I took was back over in here, with that tree, mm -hmm. and th this is a little bit far, closer in. Okay, okay, the next one, the last one here. And this is the view from the road. The last picture was taken from right about here. And uh, <coughs> those old graves that I first pointed out, that they're right about here. And there's my truck right there. OK, <coughs> so, uh, I know Gizmo is going to talk about what, you know, other things about the cemetery. But, uh, and I haven't mentioned anything paranormal, because you know, not, I know he wants to say a few things about that. But there's a couple of instances. One of them is a guy, his name is Cameron, he's a paranormal investigator. And he has had several contacts with this spirit of a woman. He doesn't know her name, but, but uh, she said that she, she, would mur she was murdered about 20 years ago by some serial killer. And her body was dumped in the pond. And when they, they find the authorities <coughs> dug her up, uh, you know, finally found her in the pond, her face was pretty much eaten away. And that's the, way her, what, that's the way her ghost looks. And, you know, her, her, uh, her spirit wow. has no face on it. Uh, another one, 
this guy Joseph, uh, I'm, I'm, and I just want to read this real quick to you. Uh, my friend and I went out to investigate this place last night. This was in March of 2016. The moment I got out of my friend's car, I grabbed my EDI device. That's an ambient, that's an ambient temperature meter, EMF detector, geophones, and so forth. Um, I walked two steps and thought I'd walk into a spider web. I started to wipe the webs off the webs off my face and realized there were, were no webs. He was mm. kind of, uh, I guess he stepped up kind of over here. He was, or maybe a little bit farther down. He was nowhere where there's, you know, would have been any spider webs. Um, so anyway, uh, he's saying uh, there's nothing taller than a headstone to attach a web to, especially at my face height. I looked down at the EDI device I was holding, and the EMF uh, lights were, were lit up the strongest I've ever seen them. Uh, as, as the same, they were lit, lit up at the same time as the webbing on his face. Later, during the spirit box session, I asked the spirits if they could please touch my friend on his face, so he could feel the same sensation I felt. A moment later, my friend mouthed to me, "He feels something touching around his mouth." Upon playback of my audio recorder, which was recording the spirit box, I caught the words, I did, after I asked it to touch my friend's face when he felt it. We caught other voices from the box as well as such names like Bobby, but we aren't finished listening to the recording yet. I'm sure we have blah, 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 blah. And so anyway, there's a couple of instances, and I know a lot of people who've, who've gone through uh, Shiloh and have had all kinds of experiences. Now I don't know what you know what's going to happen to us because if there's a lot of us, maybe nothing because you know oftentimes when you get a big crowd, the, the spirits just don't have the. That happens to us once. We had a big crowd and and uh, still we basically got no reaction. But you know you keep going because I I believe that sometimes they get you know they start getting comfortable. Especially in, in, in like with a person that has been there several times. This happens also, you just remind me something. This happens also in investigations. We went to a case in a I think I, I don't know if I related to you this before or not. Anyway, we went to a coin. Uh, the, uh, the parents of this young lady were separating. Her mother told her that she had felt something in the house and the lady complained that she'd been touched, you hear voices and stuff like that, right? We went all the way to a point to investigate. Um, I think I'm sensitive, <coughs> you're she's psychic. Uh, she was on a team at, at this time, that was years ago. I didn't feel anything. And uh, we didn't get any video, we didn't get any recording, no EVP, no nothing like that. Well, after reviewing the evidence, I had to give the news to the person, right? Uh, and she started crying. And, but to me, you know, uh, she was honest in what she felt, right? So I told the team, we're going back to a point. We're going to do a second investigation. So now the team asked me why we didn't find anything the first time. And I said, okay, listen. According to what we have learned in the research, there was an area, a fire in that area in the 90s, and then think about it this way. You get an entity that knows you, knows your friends, your family, whatever, right? Knows the time you go to bed, you feel comfortable enough to let you know it's around. And here we come, a group of totally strangers those strangers with electronics talking all over the house uh, in the darkness calling for you. Come on. The entity can be bold and said, okay, I communicate. Or, this is not my show. <laughs> and he, he hides. That's what I thought was the case. So I said to the team, the next time we get there, we may not be such strangers anymore. Let's give it a shot. Well, the, the next time we did not only get 
good information, but we were able with the spirit box to have the entity communicate with the client directly. And we learned that he, he died in the fire, he was 39 years old, he had family. Uh, and, uh, and then we asked him, you know, can we ask you please not to, you know, she, she's terrorized. Can we ask you not to, you know, scare her anymore and all that? And he said, yes. I said, can we ask you to promise? And after a while, I said, yes. And, and I said, okay, we're going to trust you. Please live in peace. We'll pray for you and all that. And we did that, and that was another case. No more any problem, no more nothing. All right? They still live in the house. How do I know? Because you had to call the client after some time and see how's it going, you know? I mean, like, or you finish the case, you put the file away, and you can't do that. You have to call him back. It's a courtesy call, you know? How you doing? And, okay, you know, uh, you need your help. We need your, I'll help you know that for you and stuff like that. So that's a case right there, you know. Yeah. Uh, did you have pictures what happened in this grave after the hurricane? I'm sorry, come again. After the hurricane. Did you get well, any pictures? I, I, well, he's been uh, at some point there, and I've been at some point there. And what I saw was a mess <coughs> in yellow lines. However, he's been there also, <coughs> and he yes, did not yes. notice the yellow lines, and it seems like because that last night, that night was, there was a crew there working. So it seems like there's a lot of progress. So what I'm going to do is today, after the society, I'm going to travel there. You know, my family's going back to Halloween, Halloween, so. Might as well. Go from, yeah, they, they, they get pieces with that. Four nights go together. Come again? Halloween. It's four nights together. Yeah. Four nights. Mm -hmm. We well, officially been together, so you know that. Yeah, but I got a Halloween event. This Halloween event for teenagers and adults. Very teenagers. As, as kids aren't allowed because because it features loud noises and language and screaming and people. One of the things that I show everybody, and you have been there for this, and everybody here knows. Watch out with your imagination. When I go to investigate a place, right? Uh, in my head, oh no, they got ghosts, they got ghosts, they got ghosts. Trust me, you're gonna find ghosts. <laughs> because your imagination is gonna play it for you. All right? I always say, get the evidence, stop by yourself. Just go in, be open, get it happen. You know? And if it's there, if there, you find it. But you know, this is. I don't want to Halloween Horror Nights because of my reflexes. <laughs> yeah, I'm the kind of person that if you, uh, let's say, I'm doing something and you all of a sudden go like that, you're going to get hurt. <laughs> if I go to Halloween Horror Nights, I'm going to get arrested. <laughs> so I don't go to Halloween Horror Nights. <laughs> Besides, besides, I don't leave my dinner anywhere. Yeah, there's a lot of drunk people who are going to do that. Yeah, well, my, my family has been going there for years, but then.